Hey guys, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I just wanted to give a short tutorial and more of a spotlight on how easy it is to do glass etching. So, fairly simple process. First thing you gotta do, pick your glass. What are you gonna etch? Um, this right here, Dollar Store Stein, so I paid a dollar for these. I've got a whole bunch more. I'm gonna be working on these for my buddies for our upcoming D&D game this weekend. But you can do whatever you want. I've got uh, some cheap vases here, uh, you casserole dishes, you could do sets of flutes or pine glasses or, or whatever, anything you want to do that's out of glass. So it's a fairly simple process, so I'll just walk you through what else you're going to need. Um, regular old rubbing alcohol, that way you can clean the surface before you go and apply your stencil or, or go to do any etching. You're going to probably need cotton ball, cotton swab, paper towel, something to apply the alcohol too to rub it down on the glass and then the most important thing is you're gonna need some sort of etching cream now what I have here is what my wife bought this is the Martha Stewart Crafts glass etching cream uh, this is a about a six ounce bottle I think this goes for about $25 comes with a little brush um, you can get this at Michaels you can get this on Amazon um, or any other craft store I know there are other brands out there I know armor etch is a pretty popular one from what I've heard, it's actually better than this, but all I have is this to go off of, so that's what I'm going to be using. Um, some sort of applicator. I'm just going to be using a toothpick because I'm going to be doing letters and numbers, so it's small, so some sort of applicator. This actually does come with a brush, but the problem you might run into is brush is a fairly wide surface area, so when you go to brush on the cream, you might have to tape off the edges because you don't want to get excess. Uh, and if, if this is something you want to do, stencils. Um, these right here, I don't know if you can see those, they're, they're just regular letters and numbers. Um, this is again the Martha Stewart stuff. Um, these run about seven dollars. You get a couple different size letters and you can get, you know, you can see at the bottom here there's like floral patterns and stuff. Uh, she makes a whole bunch of them. These are self-adhesive so you can stick them to whatever you want to etch uh, and they'll just stay right on there. Uh, another thing to be mindful of is if you're going to be doing a lot of, maybe get uh, another set because you only get one set of each letter. So if you have to use a name or you're writing something out that uses multiple letters, especially vowels, you're going to be having to stop and then wait to finish up what you were doing so you can add the, the next letter if it's a duplicate. But that's, that's really it. Um, like I said, I, I may try to freehand something a little bit later so we might need a sharpie marker. I'm thinking I might take one of these and I don't know, try to draw something on here in a sharpie to get an outline and then just sort of freehand etch in the middle. We'll see how that goes but for now what we're gonna do is, so I guess I'll bring these all over here. One, two, three. I got four more of these to etch and I've got one spare that we might try to do something crazy with the freehand one. So, I did one last night just to make sure everything was still working okay. And I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It says Zook. Z-O-O-K. Put my hand behind it maybe. No. Anyway, Zook. So this is permanently etched on there. It's not really raised, you can't feel it. But this, it's a permanent fixture to this glass. So it'll last through the dishwasher, things like that. Um, so again, because this had two O's, what I had to do was Z-O and then a letter just for a spacer and then the K. I etched the Z-O and K and then I had to wash it all, clean it all off, and then peel the O off and put the O back on here. All right, so we're gonna start with one of the simpler characters because he's actually luckily one that doesn't have multiple letters. So, the character's name is Samuel, so what I'm doing is I'm making a custom stein for each one of the players in my party, and they're all going to have their characters' names on the glasses. I just thought it was something fun, and again, this doesn't really cost a whole lot, so it's also a good way to do presents or, you know, just something fun. So right now I'm putting the rubbing alcohol on the cotton ball and then just gonna kind of rub the cotton ball around. 
the area where I think I'm going to be putting the letters just to make sure it's clean so that the adhesive will stick. So, the important thing is now it's clean and you want it to dry before you go and put the letters on. So I'm just going to rub another clean cotton ball over that to kind of dry out the wetness. You just kind of, you may want to use a, like a microfiber cloth over a cotton ball. I just have these here because, you know, if it could get a little cotton strands on here and that's going to be a problem for your, uh, your letters. So we're just going to start planning out where the letters are going to go on here. So you just want to make sure you, you know, think this out. And I don't really have any trick to figuring out if they're, or to making them straight. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And you also just want to be mindful of where you're placing things because you know, if you have a longer name or something, it could start wrapping around the back. So you just need to plan that out. So I'll just do this real quick. Got Sam. And again, like I said, you may want to look into multiple packages if you're going to be doing a lot of these. It's a lot of the same letter. So. Bear with me here. See. Yep, see that one came out. You can kind of tell a little bit. Start to see that. Sam, you looks fairly straight, although I think I'm starting to go at a slight upward angle. But, you know, whatever, it's a homemade gift and it's a sweet glass. So yeah, hold the gift horse in the mouth. Here. And again, you probably could put, you know, a ruler or a, a tape measure or something on here to guarantee that your letters are going to line up perfectly. And they'll be in a straight line, I think. Well, let's see. We put the toothpick on here. It looks it looks fairly straight, I would say. Let's get the So I'm pretty happy with this. I think the M needs to just get adjusted a little bit. Alright, so now we're back. I feel more confident about the letters. So it's time to start the etching process. Now, I do want to warn you that Whatever is in this stuff, it's pretty nasty. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, Bob, ammonium bifluoride and sodium fluoride. So essentially, a, like a low-grade acid. What you don't want to do, you do not want to touch this. You do not want to, dr obviously, don't drink this. Right here on the side... Harmful or fatal if swallowed, skin irritant, eye irritant, exposure may cause damage to bones and ligaments. This shit's no joke. Do not uh, take this lightly. Although first aid, if eye contact occurs, we're in some tap water for 5 to 10 minutes. If irritation persists, seek medical care. Um, wash with soap and water within 5 minutes if it gets on your skin. Um, so, I would typically recommend... Especially if it's your first time, uh, <laughs> use protection. Uh, um, anyway, uh, rubber gloves, apron. Uh, I don't believe the fumes are harmful, and it doesn't really give off any scent. I don't see anything in here. Yeah, wear glass, keep away from eyes, do not eat, drink, or smoke. Um, Oh, apparently use a NIOSH certificated mask for dust or mist, but, uh, or have adequate ventilation. I'm in a pretty open room. I'm not going to be messing with this. So, here goes. So, what I typically do here is squeeze the bottle so that it comes up to the top here, and then just stick the bottom of the toothpick in there to just get it on the toothpick. The reason I'm using a toothpick is because, as you saw, these letters, it's a fairly small space. So essentially what I'm doing is just touching the etching 
cream over top of the letter to kind of get a nice even coat for letter. So once I finish up the S here, I'll zoom, I'll bring it in to the camera so you guys can see what it looks like. Um, again, you could use a brush, but depending on the size of your brush, you've got to worry more about um, going over the side and then having etching lines where you don't need them. So, if you can see that there, it doesn't really, just a nice simple coat over the outside. Um, and you can kind of, this is a trick that I found out last night, you can't really see it there. But if you're wondering if your coats are even, you can hold it up to the light and you can see through the etching cream. And then that'll show you, you know, if you missed any spots or your light in any particular spot. So, I guess I'll probably just time lapse this forward and uh, continue just going on as I go and etch this. Alright, so, now that that's done, you may also want to just cover this up in between if you're not doing anything so you don't let that dry out. But, let's see if you can tell here, I have a nice even coat around the entire thing. Now, because you have a lot of leeway on these stencils here, you may want to kind of just go a little bit over the outside. Um, because you have all the room of the stencil letter itself to play with. So, basically, if you feel comfortable in the coat that you've done, you can just set this down and let this wait for 15 minutes. And at the end of the 15 minutes, we'll just go wash this off and it'll be ready. But what my wife told me to do, and it seems like it's worked out pretty well uh, when she's done it in the past, she likes to, every five minutes or so, just dip the toothpick back in the etching cream and just kind of go over it and kind of like shake it up a little bit. Um, for the most part, I don't really have any bubbles. I see a couple of bubbles here and there. So you don't know if the bubbles are going to translate through onto your finished product. So you don't want that because you want a nice even letter. So every five minutes or so, take a little bit more and then just kind of kind of go over it and I mean you don't even necessarily need to do this you can just kind of go over this to, to remove your bubbles those of you that have done you know resin casting or that kind of stuff you know that bubbles in the finished product can usually you don't see them at first but they can really mess everything up so just want to kind of go over it so I can get real close to the camera so you just kind of want to just go over it like this touch the letters and make sure that there's no bubbles, things like that. Just as a quick note, some of you may have noticed at the end there when I was turning it around to show you how uh, to just touch up any bubbles, I actually bumped the L and dragged it down. So I got a little bit on my hand, but I washed it off. But unfortunately, I was only, I got to it a little too late. So I actually do have some etch marks on the glass that are now going to be there forever. But <clears> the <throat> most important thing is when you're etching, if you do get the solution outside of the area that you have desired and it gets on the glass where you didn't want it, get to it with some water on a paper towel or something as soon as possible. Because I actually had it kind of, it was like it got smeared down here and like over here. And I got rid of all of this. There's just like a little line up here that got etched because it was the last part I got to. So just be mindful of that. Um, but yeah, a couple more minutes and we'll be ready to test. All right, so here we are, our 15 minutes later. You can see it started to clear out. So all we're going to do is just get some really hot water and just wash this off. You're going to want to make sure you have some sort of plug in the bottom of the drain in case it does get so powerful that it'll actually wash your stencils off. It typically won't, but here we go. Just let the water 
warm up a little bit here. The hotter the better on this, because um, you're going to want to, it's just, because again, you don't want to touch any of this stuff. So, you're going to want to get this, it's pretty warm. So, you're just going to, again, just run this under the hot water, and you can start to see, well, I don't know if you can start to see that, because, let's see if I can tilt this a little bit. Well, either way, I take my word for it, you can't see because of the sunlight. But you start to just wash off all of the etching cream. Let's see it better if it's in this sink? Nope. Alright, well, you take my word for it. This is actually very hot. Okay, so that was that. So now you can see very clear there is no more etching cream. So now I'm just going to dry off my hand here. Dry off the outside of the mug. Inside of the mug. And then I'll go grab our little stencil set real quick. Here comes the... You just put them right back where you got them. I threw back in the other room because the camera died before I could finish. But, let's see if we turn this away from the sun here. You can see. This is a little bit better. I just threw a glove in here and put white against the back. So you can see. Oops, I'm off frame here. Samuel. S A M U E L. And then you can see down here where I messed up and there's that little etch mark. But yeah, all in all, this took us about five minutes or so to complete. All right, so now as you can see, all of the mugs have been finished. So those are all custom etched. You can see that right there. Torgar, Zook, etc. Oh way. So now we're gonna try to do, I was originally, like I said, I was going to do some freehand etching, but I looked on Etsy and I was right, you could buy uh, various glass etching stencils on Etsy. But for the intense purposes of this, I'm going to try something different. Rather than freehand, if you see that, I printed out just a picture of a Pokeball. Cut it out with some, uh, printed it on a printer, regular printer paper. Um, cut it out with a razor blade, and then just scotch taped it to the glass. Um, if you want to go a step further, sticker paper, um, like sticky back paper, would probably be better because this middle part of the Pokeball, you can see it's kind of loose and don't want to move. So something that would be sticky to that would probably be a better idea. Um, it would have been a pain in the ass to try to get tape on the inside of that, so I didn't bother. So we're just going to kind of see how this goes. Um, and for this, I'm using the brush that came with this etching cream. So I'm just going to squish this up to the top, use this little brush, and then we're just going to brush this cream very gently, trying not to get outside of the template without moving that centerpiece too much. Um, again, sticker paper probably would have been a better call. But I didn't think about that till after the fact. So, again, I'm just going along the edges, hoping that the etching cream will actually help to stick the stencil down. Unfortunately, doing it this way, you're really not going to know if you put a little too much on here. As we saw with some of the other ones, you have a little bit of time if you make a mistake to fix it. But if I make a mistake here, I'm not really going to be able to do that. So I think I've got a pretty nice light base coat of this etching cream on here. 
So I'm just going to go over this very lightly. It's another coat here. It's a lot easier to pile it up pretty heavily with a tiny little stencil. So for this, we're going to see. But you get the point. The main point of this is you don't have to spend a lot of money on custom stencils if this will end up working. And yeah, I think I might even have sticky back printer paper in the house. And did not even think about that. So, I'm sort of kicking myself right now. But if you remember with a little stencil, we went over back over it several times with a toothpick to remove the bubbles. With the brush like this, you don't really get any bubbles. It's sort of when you're brushing it, you sort of smooth it out. So um, it's just gonna be it's gonna be a process. We're gonna learn about this together here. Um, one thing to note, actually, now that I'm here and we're talking about it after the mugs are done, if you remember how I did go over them after the fact to remove the bubbles, you won't be able to see it in any of these, but the, I did initially, I thought, oh, it's fine, uh, and I just put, left it, didn't go back over some of them, and actually got kind of like an alligator crackled paint effect familiar with that from spray painting or with special custom wall paints. So rather than a nice even coat, I may have even said this before and now I'm just repeating myself, but uh, it's actually several days later from the start of the first video. So um, another thing you have to watch out for with a brush is the brush bristles getting coming out because this is just a nice Soft like horsehair paintbrush, but some of the bristles came out in the etching cream. So that's going to cause weird lines in your final piece here. Yep. Got bristles everywhere. You can tell I've got a big heavy smush on the inside of the stencil because it's not taped down flat. So. Here's a nice thin coat, and I can actually see on the inside where there's drips. Uh, but I think we're going to just leave this like this. Uh, I don't even think I'm going to bother with this one, since I kind of went over it several times, smoothing it out with the brush. I don't think we're going to bother coming back over this for any subsequent coats, because I think I'll just do more damage than help. So, I'll leave this sit for about 15 minutes. We'll come back and uh, see how it looks. Well, we're back and <laughs> it didn't really turn out so well. And you can see I got the general gist of the Pokeball. And for the most part it came out, but the fact that the etching cream could get underneath the pieces of paper allowed it to kind of smush all over the place and make it not really look that great. But the benefit of this is that this mug was a dollar from the dollar store. I'm not out a ton of money. I'm out maybe, I don't even know, not that much etching cream you saw. So um, that's it for this tutorial. I may throw up a picture after the fact uh, if I do this with actual sticky paper might just go on the other side, put it on here, and we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. And see you next last time. night's mishap, I decided I'd go out today and try to do this again. So I went to Staples, I bought some regular adhesive back label paper, printed the same template again, looks like I printed it a little bit bigger than the one I did last night, and I went with the clear label, so it's kind of a little more plasticky than the other one, which is paper, which I worried that you might have had some of it actually seep through the paper itself and then cause issues with the etching. Um, the only problem I'm noticing 
is when I went to put the label down because of the curves of this, perhaps if I cut it a little bit closer to the actual symbol, um, it wouldn't have had this, but I did get a couple, I don't know if you can see there's some wrinkles, but I don't think that's going to affect the overall outcome. So, we're just going to do what we did yesterday, essentially, we've got our brush here, going to dip our brush in the etching cream, and then, there we go. Nice, even coat over the outside. And then, same thing, be mindful of your bristles. And then we're just going to let this sit. I think it should be right. I'm actually getting the, the smell now. We did not have that last night. The queen goes. You get too tired. Oh, where the coat's too thin. So. I do notice it's starting to peel up in a few spots, so. I don't think it's going to be perfect, but I do think it's going to be better than it was. I'm way out of frame. But, oh. Okay, there we have it, all etched. No, you won't really, there's the other side's mishap. So, we're just going to let this sit for 15 minutes, and then when we come back, we'll see how the overall product looks. All right, so all finished. Um, it didn't come out exactly perfect, but at a quick glance, probably from that distance, it looks great. If I get up really close, you can see there's a little bit, um, the coat wasn't exactly even as I thought it was. And there's a couple of little lines where there shouldn't be. But, all in all, that was pretty good. Maybe a contact paper, some sort of vinyl, would be a little bit better than a shipping label. But you saw that. It's obviously much better than the way this one came out, which was the other side with the printer paper. But, anyway, thanks for watching guys. This was my short little glass etching tutorial, but more of a awareness thing for you guys all about how simple it is to glass etch. So, see you next time.